Hello, this is uh, me live for the second time this week on uh, one of my pages. Uh, I thought it was about time I came and said hello on Instagram. Um, so um, I'm not quite, I'm sort of perched in the middle of this. I'm trying to do Facebook and Instagram at the same time. So forgive me if it looks a bit strange. I mean, on Facebook, I think all you've got is my head. Um, but Instagram, I think, looks a little bit better. Okay, so I'm here to um, talk about the A to Z of skincare. We're halfway through. Um, we've done 13 days so far, which is A to M. My granddad once taught me to say the alphabet backwards. I might do it for you later. Um, but uh, I've covered... Um, all of those letters so far with one or two, um, anywhere up to sort of two to four different um, items on each day. So if you've been following me on Instagram, because those of you watching me on Facebook, these posts have only gone out on Instagram. So um, if you want to see all those, come across onto Instagram and have a look. <coughs> Excuse me, but I thought I'd um, come on to both to, uh, to say hello to you. Um, today. So what I'm going to do is briefly go through everything that we've talked about. I've got a little box of goodies to show you some bits as we go as well and then um, hopefully answer any questions if anybody's got any and um, if you think of something later just stick it into the threads and I will answer them either as we go along or later on as I see them. Um, I have brought my coffee with me because that's life and um, we'll have to bear in mind that the dogs might bark because that's what they do. Mm. So we started, I don't actually know what day it was now, but it was 13 days, nearly two weeks ago, with um, obviously A. I think even uh, the work, the ones that are sort of rustiest at our um, alphabet, I had to write, write a few down, what's next? I think we all know that we start at A. So we uh, started, I, the way I've written these down on my list, I've got a little crib sheet here with all the ones I've done. Um, I don't know that they're necessarily in the order they went up, but there we go. So... The first one was probably ageing. Um, it's something that concerns most of my working days um, and it's uh, the most important thing that I focus on because ageing happens to us all and we don't all like it very much. So ageing is a really key thing that I have to understand. We have to decide exactly what that means for you sort of scientifically speaking, for your skin, for your body, and look at all of the things that affect that. So ageing is obviously um, a really big thing because there's nothing we can do about that. So my job is to understand that process as well as possible and to apply that to you, my client, as the individual. So it might be looking at your sort of chronological logical age um, so you know I'm 47 I can't change that there is nothing we can do about our chrono chronological age um, but you may look older or younger than that and there's lots of reasons behind that your your genes for one is very important so look at your parents um, if your mum looks amazing uh, chances are you're going to uh, to take some of that and you're going to age quite well too um, if, uh, if you've got a very good diet and you're well hydrated, so if you um, eat a variety of good foods, real sort of natural foods rather than processed, you keep your sugar intake down, you keep your alcohol and caffeine intakes down, says she with her coffee. I'm very good with my food, I'm not ready to give up my coffee yet. Um, and things like environmental exposure, so things like environmental toxins, very important for our skin and for our health um, generally, and our health reflects in our skin okay that's what you know that's what shows um, how we are on the inside and our skin is the first thing to to well, not to be sacrificed but you will see your age on your skin and so my job is to find the best ways to help you either sort of coaching on lifestyle um, providing the right home care products getting the right treatments in place getting the right injectables in place and getting an understanding of what aging means for you. Um, I'm not in the business of trying to make you look 20 years younger. If you're 47 like I am, I'm never gonna look 20 again. And it's when you try that we end up with problems. So that's aging and it's probably the biggest thing of all of this. So I'm quite glad it's on A because it really is up there with most important things. Um, 
the next A is uh, Illumia. So Illumia is the main product brand for skin. I'm sorry, I knew my dogs would go nuts. I might have to pause and go and rescue them in a second. Um, so uh, Illumia is the main product brand that we use for all of our skincare and our chemical peels and mask facial treatments. Um, they are a cosmeceutical grade product. Um, and what that means is they, they're active. They actually do stuff to your skin. They're going to do um, things that will change the way your skin functions. You will get active results from that. You will see brightening of your skin. You, we can help pigmentation. We can help lines and wrinkles. And we can put the foundations of a good, um, of a really good skincare routine in to help with all of those things. The basics are really, really important. So Illumia is my brand of choice. They're very ethical. They're very fabulous. Um, and I'm very happy to, to use them. I'm really conscious that you've just got my head in this screen. That's a bit better. Um, so, um, just checking that one. Okay. Yeah, okay. So, um, Illumia is fantastic. If you want to know more about Illumia, if you want a, uh, a personalised prescription of products written, then just let me know and I can do that. We can do a lot of that by Zoom and even telephone, depending on, uh, on how we, uh, we get on with that. Uh, the next A, if I, if I this is going to be a long video if I keep going like this, so I'm going to try and just wish you, this is a summary of everything that we've covered in the last 13 days. So acne, another big problem that I deal with, um, and that can be on youngsters, I have sort of teenagers, um, 20 somethings, this is male and female, and also kind of later onset acne, adults onset acne, it can be quite distressing, you kind of feel like you've grown out of that. Um, it's something you sort of didn't think you'd have to deal with as we get older. And so it can be quite distressing. So it's getting the right products in place, good routines, good habits. Again, we can look nutritionally sometimes as well. Um, and treatments like LED, uh, chemical peels, all of that really, really important. And then moving on to things like the Wow Fusions and microneedling for um, longer term skin health, um, acne scarring and that kind of thing. So. There's a lot that can be done for acne. I can't cure it, but I can help you manage it, keep on top of it, keep that scarring to a minimum or improve existing scarring. So acne is a big one. I deal with it a lot. Um, there's some really powerful, quite unpleasant drugs out there and topical applications for acne that don't look after your skin. And sometimes they're, they're crucial and you have to start on that. You know, very serious cystic acne. It's going to need some antibiotics to get on top of that. But I can help alongside that with some basic products and then we start to move into maintenance. You don't want to stay on antibiotics for the rest of your life. You certainly don't want to stay on Reaccutane for too long if you're prescribed that. And it's sometimes I have actually managed to get some clients um, who have not had to go on to Reaccutane um, because we've managed to put enough things in place to, um, to stop that happening, which is brilliant. And the other A that I had, I started off well with four on my A's, didn't I? Um, and that's anti-wrinkle. So as we age, we get lines and wrinkles. That's natural, that's down to collagen production. It's down to use of our skin. It's down to gravity, hydration of the skin, collagen, um, and all of these things, hormones impact, and they all impact on us having lines and wrinkles. Um, and there are a whole plethora of treatments and preventative measures for that. So for example, um, the right home care treatments. Retinol is crucial in the prevention and treatment of lines and wrinkles and in your general skin health. We've got um, treatments such as chemical peels, uh, radio frequency, microneedling and wow fusion, which all help soften and improve the appearance of lines and wrinkles and slow down the development and keep your skin healthy so your skin ages less quickly. And then there's the obvious, there's the injectable treatments. You've got your Botox, your fillers, which all help with um, wrinkle management, if you like, with your per sort of paralyzing of muscles, sort of stopping that movement. I've got a little bit of Botox going there. I'm waiting for a little, little bit of a dose adjustment, but this side's great. Uh, this side's great. It's wrong way around in this. Uh, this side's great. I've got a tiny little dose adjustment to do this side, I think. Um, but Botox is brilliant for stopping further development of those lines and wrinkles. And uh, if you're looking after your skin properly, it's a fantastic addition to any treatment program. Um, I don't see it as a standalone treatment, though, if you're regularly injecting for um, wrinkle relaxing, but you're not looking after your skin, you're not gonna get the benefits, you're, you're not gonna have lovely glowing skin, it just stops movement. And there's a lot to do around that. So 
uh, Botox anti-wrinkle injections is not a standalone treatment. It's part of a treatment protocol. Okay, we've done A's. That was a big one. Um, and then got on to B's. Um, the, the biggest one for me is best practice. I will always recommend the best things for you that I know will give you the best results that, along the lines that you're looking for. So we, it's about finding out what your concerns are, what you um, want to achieve. You know, so what, what is it when you look in the mirror that bothers you? You know, is it is it your, your crow's feet? Is it your, your brow lines? Is it thin lips? Is it just general aging? Does your skin look dull? And um, so it's not about me looking at you going, oh, I think we need to do this and this and this, because you might go, well, that's never bothered me before. So it's about the best practice by focusing on what is important to you and putting the right treatments in place to get you as close to where you want to be as possible. Some things aren't always possible. So it's about managing expectations as well. But I always sort of sort of um, aspire to the best practice that I can give. So I, my promise to you that is that I will always do that. And your other B is, um, I started to write both, I'm not allowed to say that, we're not allowed to promote um, that treatment because of the legality surrounding um, prescription only medicine. So I'm gonna talk about brow lines instead. So I thought that was close enough. So our brow lines are here, and they are, you know, your frown lines. So when you frown, I can't frown very much at the minute. Um, you can see a few lurking at the top here. Um, and they can make people look tired, they can make people look older, they can make you look a bit cross. So uh, we can treat those, we can soften them with treatments and products, as I've just said, and we can inject them, but not as a standalone treatment. So that rattled through B, sorry, I need some coffee. Then we move on to C. And the first one there, the most important one for me, was vitamin C. Vitamin C is a crucial um, uh, ingredient in your skincare so this isn't about taking vitamin c orally obviously we should have enough vitamin c in our diet it's very important nutritionally to have that but um it's not the same as having it in the right formulation in your skincare products l-ascorbic acid has to be at the right concentration in the right um formulation in a skincare product to have the best effect on your skin we use one called everactive c and e it's actually the freshest version you can buy vitamin c oxidizes very quickly um, in the bottles if you buy a vitamin c serum off the shelf it in, invariably has a lot of preservatives and what have you in it because um vitamin, I said it, it oxidizes very quickly so it has to be heavily preserved and um, the vitamin c that we use it's mixed you mix it you've got a i should have brought one of those bottles down actually um, it's a vial of a vitamin E peptide-based serum and you put your vitamin, crisp, vitamin C crystals in and you mix it. That will stay fresh for four to six weeks. So that um, gives you, so you get a box with three of those vials and that lasts you sort of three to five months. So um, it's a really important one. It's an amazing product and it is really the best version of vitamin C that I've found. It's in the right concentration, in the right formulation, and you use it every morning, it just drops onto the skin um, as one of the first products that you would put on your skin and your sunscreen goes over the top because that's always non-negotiable. Collagen um, is another C. Collagen is the, it's the scaffolding from your skin, it's the structure of your skin, it is the protein that makes up um, you, your, your muscles, your everything it, um, has collagen. And as we age, our collagen production slows. So we lose muscle mass, we lose the, the structure of our skins, and we, it, all starts, it all starts to collapse a bit. Our skin doesn't feel as nice. Um, and there's lots of things that rely on collagen very heavily. And if you're menopausal, your collagen production drops off a cliff. It starts to reduce from the age of about 21. And after, after sort of perimenopause, it really does fall off a cliff. So we need to be doing using products and doing treatments that stimulate collagen and one of those things would be microneedling chemical peels radio freaks all those things stimulate collagen and we can also take oral collagen supplements so if anybody is interested in that i can do that if i meant to bring some down to show you but i haven't got them um crow's feet so this is a little bit more about what we talked about about your brow lines and your anti-wrinkle um crow's feet are the ones here there you go. Mine are a bit softer because they've had a bit of a treatment recently. I like to keep a little bit of movement here. If you've got no movement here and no movement here, you can look a bit expressionless. 
and your face then wants to move in different ways. So um, it will still try and move. So I like to keep a bit of uh, movement here. I think um, I've got no lines at the minute. I don't know what you can see. I've got no real lines here when I'm when I'm sort of you know without smiling. When I smile, I have got some. I do use eye creams, um, but it I crow's feet are they're quite a happy line. They show that you smile. They only appear when you smile. So um, yes, if they're really deep and they really bother you and they're still there when you're not smiling, we do need to treat them. Um, but I don't want to completely freeze people. I, I'm all for natural and keeping things as subtle as possible. So, you know, freeze yourself here so you can um, get a nice little brow lift and all those kind of things. But keep a little bit of movement around the eyes. But serious crow's feet, you should be using a retinol eye cream. You should be using an eye serum every day. You should be using sunscreen, sunscreen, sunscreen. And um, we can do regular treatments. So things like wow fusion, microneedling. We can treat quite close to the eyes with those and even peels. I'll be doing up to here and if you really want to deal with crow's feet I'll bring this up again when we talk to eyes you could get some eye treatment pads as well I'll go I'll talk you through those a little bit more in a minute and then the last thing is consistency the way to get results on the skin is consistency do the right things every day at home you don't have to have 18 products but have two or three of the right ones to get the um, the results for your skin and then consistently have the right skin treatments. Now this doesn't have to be every two weeks, it doesn't even have to be once a month, but if three or four, five times a year you have a good, robust clinical treatment, you can only help yourself and it can only um, help your skin. But do it regularly throughout the year, rather than going, right, I'm gonna do three months of loads of treatments and then I'm not gonna do anything else, you're not gonna get the results. So consistently use retinol, consistently use sunscreen, and have a consistent treatment program. This is what I book for people now. I don't take people on for single treatments. There's not really any point, unless you have a, uh, an event coming up and we just need to give you a quick boost and a brighten and make you feel a bit better. These are about working on you over time. We want to get you, um, we wanna get you in that habit of doing the right things, just a treatment a few times a year, ideally monthly if you can do it, but otherwise, you know, if it's every three months, then that's fine, as long as we do the right thing. So consistency is really, really important. So we're on to D. Um, D, the first one I put uh, dermal fillers. So that is a, it's one of the biggest treatments out there on the aesthetic market. And there's lots of different things out there. A lot of people go, oh, I don't want fillers, they look awful. They only look awful if they're done badly. And you tend to only notice them if they're done badly. I don't want to give you lips that come around the corner before you do, or ones that you could like stick you to the window because they're so huge and bulbous that we don't want to do that. That's not what this is about. I don't want to overfill people. Um, some of you might have seen my video a, a couple of weeks ago, two weeks tomorrow, um, having cheek fillers with Shao. Now I don't think like I, I look like I've been overdone, I, what it's done is replace lost volume in my um, face because that happens when we age and when we hit menopause. So the idea of the, the fillers for my cheeks was to replace the volume that's been lost and what that does is re it replaces the hanger for your skin. So your skin sits higher, it's lifted my nasolabial folds and believe it or not it's even given me a jawline back and that's from having my cheeks filled. Not my jawline, you know, not I haven't had my nasolabial folds done, this was just cheeks. So dermal fillers are a really good tool alongside the right skincare products and alongside the right skin treatments to help combat that loss of volume, and whether it's your cheeks or your lips, or we can fill laser labial folds, we can put filler into your marionette lines. Um, and um, there are other things, ones that I don't do, things like tear troughs. Uh, Michelle, my mentor and uh, uh, colleague and friend, she does things like tear troughs, you can have uh, non-surgical rhinoplasty, so a bit of reshaping of the nose with fillers. It's a really versatile product, and actually if it's done properly, it's very safe. The product itself is very safe. All of the ones I use are from Juvederm, you'll see this again in a minute when we get to J. Um, and there's a variety and a range of products that we use, and it's very much dependent on the client, what was sort of result they were. Some of my older, more mature ladies, I would be using um, uh, either a Volbella, they're all Juvederm, made by Allergan, um, or potentially um, Ultra 2 because it's a very soft filler. 
So there's lots of different um, options. This isn't just, here's some filler, whack it in. It's very bespoke, very personalised and very natural. I would rather do two treatments uh, sort of closer together to move you forward to where you want to be than put too much in in the first place. So I work with you and what you want. It's not formulaic. I don't just do the same thing on everybody. We listen to what you want and then we do the treatment from there. The next D was dermaplaning. Now, dermaplaning, I don't view that as a very clinical treatment. It's not a clinical treatment at all. Um, but a lot of people know and understand what it is and come to me for it. For the most part, dermaplaning isn't what they need. They need something like good skincare and chemical peels or something like that. However, um, dermaplaning is quite useful if you have a lot of peach fuzz on the skin. Peach fuzz can be quite distressing for some people, so can't treat it with laser. And it can be quite visible, it can make makeup sit badly, um, and it is really the only solution is to have regular dermaplaning. So I've got a handful of ladies who come in once a month for dermaplaning. We usually uplift that to include a peel as well, so you get really good results on the skin. You don't want to over dermaplane, you don't want to start encouraging skin cells that aren't yet ready to shed off, you don't want to be scraping them off. So dermaplaning for me is about peach fuzz hair control. Um, and then we sort of tailor that treatment to the client and make it more of a, an active facial for them at the time. So it is a valid treatment, but it's not a clinical skin treatment, and I wouldn't be treating somebody for it if they weren't there to have um, sort of the peach fuzz, the really soft, fluffy hair that doesn't respond to laser. The last D was do's and don'ts. Now, I'm not going to go through that. That was actually quite a long post. But basically what that was, was looking at all of the uh, the recommendations and the things that I bang on about all the time. So sunscreen every day is non-negotiable, people. This is literally number one. Before you do anything else, get yourself a decent sunscreen in place. For the most part, we use a Lumiere. We've got various types, tinted and untinted, for all skin types, dry skin, oily skin, um, or um, I do have another one. Occasionally, somebody doesn't get on with Lumiere, but Lumiere are predominantly, they're entirely physical sunscreens. I love them. I love the feel of them. I love how they look, but occasionally somebody finds them too heavy for their skin. So our alternative is Synergy 6, which is a really lovely, um, lightweight tinted moisturiser, which is a factor 50. So if you've used a Lumiere before and, and ended up not choosing the sunscreen, come and speak to me about Synergy 6 because it's really rather nice. It's very light, very easy to use. So yeah, so the, the do's and don'ts as you use the retinol, uh, don't forget to clean your face at night, uh, don't go out in the sun without your sunscreen. Um, I can't even remember what they were now, but the, the do's and don'ts was quite a long post. So go and have a look back on that, probably, probably Monday, I think it was, um, Monday week. Monday, Tuesday of last week. Um, so there's loads of really good tips there on do's and don'ts for your skin. Um, e, we're moving on, there was three for the day on E. Epidermis, that's the top layer of your skin. Um, you have your, your sort of barrier, your protective barrier, the, the bit that keeps you from falling apart when well, no. <laughs> It's the bit that keeps uh, your skin safe and protected. Um, and then you've got your epidermis. So the epidermis is the first layer of skin cells. It's a thin layer. Um, of oh, it's about seven cells deep and that is what we can see so when we look at somebody the skin we can see is their epidermis and that is largely what I'm concerned about when I'm doing uh, skincare recommendations and skin treatments it's the most um, it, it's where most of the activity goes on that I want to deal with basically so the epidermis is really key and in a lot of people it's not protected properly, that barrier function isn't there. So that's where we start more often than not. In fact I'm amazed I didn't put barrier function into B because that's something I bang on about an awful lot. Um, exfoliation, um, you've probably all heard this term and I think I was talking about this the other day that we all remember um, St Ives peach facial scrub, sharp scratchy Stuff. I think it's still around, please don't use that. I'm not a big fan of physical exfoliation. You don't really need to. We don't need to scrub our surface of our skin. Um, a bit like I said with dermaplaning, we don't want to take off cells that aren't ready to go yet. However, if you do like a scrub, I've got two options. One of them is Lotus Scrub um, for exfoliating and one of them actually is the only other non 
a Lumiere product that I use. It's a microdermabrasion product. It has got a, a grit in it. It's very fine, but it's also got an acid base. So you get the chemical exfoliation as well. So I would always recommend something like that rather than scrubbing at your face with a dry flannel or something. Um, but exfoliation is very, very important. It gets rid of the dead, dull skin cells on the outside and um, it encourages new skin cell growth to so keep your skin sort of fresh and healthy and bright. Um, it's an important thing to be doing, but properly. And um, generally speaking, I tend to recommend chemical exfoliation, which sounds horrendous, but actually what that means is something like salicylic acid, lactic acid, um, you've probably all heard of glycolic acid. Illumia products don't have glycolic acid, I tend to use lactic instead, which is a bit more predictable, a bit more expensive, but a bit more predictable. Um, the microdermabrasion exfoliant I told you about just now has glycolic acid in it. Um, and those acids break down the bonds between your skin cells and encourage um, the skin cells to shed naturally. And it's a more gentle process for the skin so long as it's done properly. You don't want to over exfoliate. You don't want to use too many acids or too high concentration. Um, and all of our things like chemical peels, that is ultimately an exfoliation, um, but they tend to go a little bit deeper and they're a bit more controlled. The last E was eyes. Now eyes are a biggie. Uh, so if you can inject to um, relax the muscles around the eyes to stop um, crow's feet. Dark circles, they're a big problem for a lot of people. They are genetic. They are made worse by bad nutrition, high dehydration. Um, thin skin under your eyes mean you can see the muscle layer below. So good hydration to plump your skin up helps enormously. The right skin treatments to help thicken the epidermis will help. There's nothing I can do about your genes. Um, I can only encourage you to drink more. Um, and some treatments like Wow Fusion and Micronin can actually get quite close to the eyes. You can actually get quite close in. So um, you can treat quite a lot of that skin. Um, but eyes can be a bit problematic. Some of the products we use, I showed the, these to you just now. This are, these are eye rescue pads. Um, these are lovely impregnated sort of silicon type pads. They sit under the eyes and they are very rejuvenating, very refreshing. And I do believe I brought my eye products with me as well. Um, we do two eye products, retinol eye and Illumin eye. So retinol eye is for use only at night and use a tiny, tiny amount. So the, uh, uh, this one of these lasts ages. This one, I think this one is finally nearly done. Um, but you use sort of like the grain of rice size um, dot and you always use your four fingers. For eye creams, you always use your four fingers because you can't press too hard with that. So a grain of rice size piece on your fingers, dab across the brow line, dab across the bone line un underneath. Don't go too close to your eye and definitely don't ever put products on this part of your eyelid. It's too thin, it's too delicate. So at night you would use this and Illuminite is a lovely hydrating serum, can you see Illumini, and it's really good for dark circles, for hy helping with hydration, lymphatic drainage, and it gives a nice sort of luminosity, so once you've put that on, you put your sunscreen on or whatever, it actually helps make the eye area look better during the day, as well as just feel better, and getting the actual sort of active results from that. So this is my power duo for eyes. Um, if anybody ever says like, they need an eye serum, it's quite hard to choose which one Probably, if you're just going to take one, I would take a Lumini, but ultimately, if you're concerned about your eyes, you need both. You need both of those, and anybody who buys these two in October will get one of these for free from me as a present. If you buy them online, I'll get this to you separately. If you buy them from me, I will obviously just provide you with that. I'll put that out as a separate offer. In fact, I need to write myself a note to remember to put that out. Um... The iPads are lovely. They're really, really nice. Um, and they're perfect for tired eyes, had a busy week, got a hangover. Don't do that, it's really bad for your skin. Um, so that's eyes. So we've got one, two, three. We've done the first five days and it's only taken me half an hour. More coffee required. Okay, on to F. Facials. Well, that's what all this is about, isn't it? Facials. It's, facials covers a huge term. It's a nice relaxing pamper when you go to the spa and they use a variety of cosmetic products that quite often people come to me because they've had a reaction to. But so it's, it can be a lovely experience. That facial at the spa can be a lovely experience. 
you get the massage, you get the downtime, you get the soft music and, and the essential oils and all that. And that's lovely. Um, generally speaking, it's not going to give you much clinical activity. That being said, people who do regularly have facials and use reg, you know, regularly use skincare products every day, I can tell that people have done that. But if you want um, activity in your skin and you want really good results, that those facials then can become more clinical. So we can do things like um, deep hydration masks, we can do chemical peels, and then we can move on to things like radio frequency, Janeo treatments, um, skin pen, microneedling, wow fusion. They are all facials in their own right. They're just different types of facials that actually have different, um, different modalities, but they're all aiming to do the same thing get rid of dead skin cells, stimulate collagen production, hydrate the skin, soften lines and wrinkles, get your skin working better for itself. That's what I see a facial as being. You're not going to get quite the relaxing sort of, you know, ambiance that you're going to get in a spa, but you're going to get the results and you're going to get the activity in your skin that will give you longer term results if you do those more regularly. Filler, okay, so I had to put Filler in F. We've talked about filler. Filler is a really fabulous product made of hyaluronic acid, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. That gives us um, contouring abilities, replaces volume, and so on. Again, we, we've talked about that. Um, I chucked a little technical term in. I put frontalis. That's a muscle that's um, in two parts down the front of the forehead, and it's the muscle that gives us our frown lines. So when we treat um, with injectables, we are aiming to stop the activity in that muscle there and the big one that's the big one this is the one here that we would um, inject to stop that movement um, and frown lines so the, the, the uh, this was all kind of part of the same thing your frontalis is your frown lines and that's what we're aiming to stop to get rid of those wrinkles across the forehead so I've mentioned Janeo a few times in radio frequency uh, so we're on to G now Janeo is um, a, uh, a fantastic treatment modality. If anybody ever wants a one-off standalone treatment because they've got an event coming up, a wedding coming up, something like that, or they just want to feel pampered and feel like they've had something lovely, Janeo is the answer. Um, there, it's a three-part facial. The first part is very exfoliating. Now, there is an element of physical exfoliation here. Um, it's a bicarbonate capsule and it's, it reacts with a serum that we put on the skin. So you get some physical exfoliation. It does feel quite rough. It feels a little bit like microdermabrasion um, and it does get rid of all those de dead skin cells and it encourages oxygenation of the skin by creating a high concentration of carbon dioxide into the top layer of the skin. So that first part is very active. It's got acids within that serum. So it's kind of almost like a mini peel as we go as well. And um, it's, uh, it's a very active, very sort of, you know, stringent first part to that treatment. The second part is radio frequency, and I have brought the handset for this. Now, the, to the uninitiated, Janeo does look a little bit like a collection of bits and bobs from an Ann Summers shop. So this is radio frequency. They all look a little bit like this. They all plug into the Janeo. They've all got different functions. This bit here, that is your tripolar radio frequency. So the four um, diodes there um, are surrounding a thermometer. That little bit in the middle, that's the thermometer. So what happens as you stimulate the skin, goes in a figure of eight movement like this, it's, it's, it's encouraging the collagen to relax and contract and ultimately sit flat and smooth, and it does cause collagen production as well. But as the skin heats up, heat is a very important part of this, that thermometer is detecting the heat into the surface of the skin. So you're not ever going to overheat because as soon as the temperature is reached, you get a little orange light on here and it tells me to move on to the next area. So it's very controlled. The amount of, rate of radioactivity, radioactivity is definitely not radioactive. <laughs> Radio frequency that you get is very controlled and it gets it to just the right temperature to get the result. You get an instant lift and tighten with Janeo and, um, it's, uh, so it's a great one to have the day before or the morning of a big event. And I get a lot of mums of brides having this. This is a great one for mums of brides 
Um, and then the third part of the Gineo is ultrasound. So we have a, a lovely serum that goes on at the end of a Gineo and that serum is then um, encouraged to be absorbed into the skin using ultrasound. So it's a really, really nice treatment. It's about an hour. It's an hour's appointment. It's about an hour. It just feels lovely. So if you ever, that, it is the only one I recommend as a standalone, but also I do incorporate it in, um, uh, in treatment packages as well. So it might be that we alternate with one of the other treatment modalities or every third one. I've got a couple of ladies who every now and again going, so I was booked in for a peel today, but please can I have a Gineo instead? Because it's so nice. So Gineo is definitely worth a trial. Um, it's a really, really nice hands-on treatment that will leave you feel like you've had something fabulous done. The next fabulous treatment um, in G is Glow Peel. This is the deepest of the peels that we offer. Um, it's a lactic acid, salicylic acid and resorcinol peel and it's known as a half Jesna. Uh, Jesna was the guy who invented peels or something um, but um, the percentages are half that of that original sort of stronger deeper level peel and what that means is with you can layer up um, the glow peel. My skin won't tolerate more than one layer, some areas I can get two on but generally speaking it's one to two layers for me but you can go all the way up to four layers with the glow peel and the more layers you put on it pushes it deeper through the epidermis towards the dermis so you can get a medium depth peel with glow peel. I don't do it very often and actually you don't really need to. The results I get from keeping it reasonably superficial are very very good um, but if you go over two layers you do need to have hydrocortisone prescribed to, um, to counteract any inflammation if it occurs. Now the more layers of glow peel you put on, the more likely you are to get visible shedding. I rarely get visible shedding with the peels that I do, but if you're going to, it's going to be with the glow peel. Um, and um, all that means is that for a day or two, your skin's going to feel a little bit on the dry side. Um, you'll get some, you might get some powderiness. If I have a peel, I tend to get it around here and here, and it's because I talk a lot. And so they're the bits that are moving the most and um, are likely to uh, to shed the most quickly. All glow peels come with aftercare treat um, products. So you get a kit of aftercare products to make sure that the skin recovers properly and you get the best results from that treatment. You get um, a week's worth of cleanser, um, recovery balm, which is the most gorgeous product ever, and um, sunscreen. So you get some sunscreen, although hopefully you'd have sunscreen anyway, but you get a very hydrating one to use for that first um uh, that first week after a treatment. The last G is glycation. Uh, glycation is, if you've ever seen somebody um, older with what looks like sort of crosshatch type wrinkles, um, often happens around the eyes and across the forehead. Glycation, that, that's what glycation is, or that's what how glycation presents on the skin. Um, glycation is where sugar molecules attached to a protein and the protein that it likes most of all to attach to is collagen and the impact of that leaves the skin sort of less flexible um, less healthy and it looks it shows age much much more quickly now glycation can happen um, in other places as well as just the skin so keeping your sugar intake down keeping your processed food intake down keeping alcohol down is really really important to keep your skin healthy and to reduce the chances of glycation um, pollution also impacts on glycation as well. So we've got a really, really fantastic product called AGE, which is designed to work on glycation um, and it's an antioxidant to help protect the skin externally as well. So glycation, it tends to be seen in older people um, and it certainly tends to be seen in people who haven't looked after their skin and have a high sugar and processed food um, consumption. So that is always worth bearing in mind. This isn't just about the outside. Something I talk about a lot is um, getting your nutrition right as well because that will impact on your skin. You'll get away with it in your 20s and you can eat all the rubbish in the world. You can drink yourself to death. You can smoke like a train. Um, but then when you hit 30s and 40s and 50s, this is where it starts to show on your skin. So the less of those things you can do early, the better. Okay, we're on to H. There's a couple of these I'll be able to go through quite quickly. So H is hands. Treat your hands too. Your hands will show your age. Our faces and our hands are exposed to UV light 
24 hours, well, no, not 24 hours a day, all daylight hours every single day of the year. And UVA rays are as strong in the middle of winter as they are in the middle of summer. And it's UVA that causes most of the damage. We also don't look after our hands. We do the washing up when we don't stick gloves on. We don't put hand cream on when we should. I bet virtually none of you put sunscreen on your hands. And so we get sunspots, we get wrinkles, we get dry bits, we get broken nails. Look after your hands. It shows your age like this bit does. Get a hand cream with a sunscreen in it. And all of our treatments, except glow peel, can be done on the hands as well as on the face. So, and it's always cheaper to upgrade to add hands into a treatment than it is to do it as a standalone treatment. So if you're there having a facial treatment, it's usually 15 to 30 pounds to upgrade to have your hands done, depending on what the treatment is. So do ask, I can treat your hands as well. Um, and having your hands looking uh, younger can really help how other people perceive you, how you perceive yourself, because you'll sit, you're looking at your hands all day long. And I look at mine and think, oh, it's my mum. It looks like my mum's hands. Um, but I would like to keep them looking younger. And I'm, I'm just as bad for not using hand cream as often as I should. So hands, look after your hands. Um, hyaluronic acid. Okay, so this is a really, really important um, ingredient. We use it in a lot of our skincare products. Hyaluronic acid is um, a natural substance in the body. Um, and it is what holds on to moisture in your skin. It, uh, it's hydrophilic, so it, it attracts water to itself. And one molecule of hyaluronic acid can hold up to four, five molecules of water. So it attracts water to itself. And then in products such as the mesotherapy for wow fusion and in dermal fillers, lip and dermal fillers, the predominant ingredient is hyaluronic acid. That hyaluronic acid is formulated in such a way where it's, um, it's called cross-linking. And it, all that does, it makes it more stable. So it can be used and it isn't just suddenly going to disappear. Hyaluronic acid in fillers. So for example, I've got this one here. Just dropped it on the floor, bear with me. I'll edit that bit out. Um, <laughs> So I used Juvederm, and in that syringe, in that syringe there, oh, it's typical, most people have been watching, it's just at the point I throw something on the floor. That, in that syringe there, there is cross-linked hyaluronic acid. And what that does, it's very moldable, it's very soft, it's very safe, because it's a, an ingredient that our body will recognise, and um, it's, uh, it can be injected and moulded and, and put into where we need it to go. But equally, if it's in the right formulation in your skincare products, it helps with hydrating the skin as well. So it's a key ingredient in all of our skincare, in um, all of our products and a lot of our treatments. Um, and you, you can be drinking as much water as you like, but if you don't have hyaluronic acid in your skin, you're not going to be able to hang on to that water. So when you're doing lip fillers, for example, hyaluronic acid fillers can help hydrate the lips. So you're not necessarily looking to have big, huge, sort of plump, you know, um, sucker type lips, but actually just by adding a little bit of hyaluronic acid back in, in the medium of a filler can just add hydration back to the lips. So it's a really, really important ingredient. On to eye, um, injectables. I think we've talked about those a lot. Injectables are Botox, toxin, anti-wrinkle injections, wrinkle relaxing injections, whatever term you want to use. None of those I'm allowed to put in writing and advertise. Um, and they are your fillers. They are cheek fillers, lip fillers, nose labial folds, marionette lines. Um, and um, there's other things that can be done as well, but they're the ones that I offer. So we can add that volume back to the cheeks. We can add the volume back to the lips. We can give you a Cupid's bow. Um, we can just plump up thin lips a little bit. And um, so the, the injectables are, are quite a big part of what I do and probably the biggest requested treatment in the aesthetics world at the moment. Botox and fillers without a shadow of a doubt are the, the, the top requested most commonly um, bought um, skin treatments. My dog's just going off again. I think my children are just getting home from school so they're going to come in and be horrified that I'm on live and they're just going to walk in so bear with me briefly when they come in. Okay so um, Intellibrite was the next eye. Intellibrite is a really, really lovely serum. I don't think I brought Intellibrite. I've got even toned down. I am doing a live, guys, just so you know. 
you can you can give me two minutes. Go and get yourself changed, and then you can make your coffee. My daughter's horrified; she can't make her coffee. Um, so even tone is one of a pair. The other one being Intellibrite. They are um, pigment serums. I've been using them quite religiously lately because I was developing quite a patch of pigment up here and another one over here. I've got a keratosis. I was talking about this yesterday when I did my peel. Keratosis is something that um, it's a little bit more stubborn, a little bit more difficult to treat. I've had laser on that. Um, I keep it at bay with the pigment serums, with Intellibrite being one of them. Pigmentation is a bit of a pain. You have to be consistent. I've not missed a day in over three months with the pigment serums. And I have to keep that up. That's something I've got to keep going. Um, and I've also put investment under eye as well. Um, you can go to, you know, Boots or whatever, and you can buy sort of relatively cheap skincare products. You can do, you know, buy a couple of quid for a cleanser off the supermarket shelf. You can, you can do all of those things. But if you value your skin and you want to do it properly, it, it should be seen as an investment because... I don't want people just coming and having one treatment. I don't just want them buying anything and going away. For me, the results come with commitment and consistency. And, um, you know, not many people have just got the money they can say, oh, yeah, whatever, don't, I'm not bothered about what it costs. So it's about discussing that investment with them and about um, getting the right things in place for them so they value that investment and get the results from it that they are trying to achieve. And that's really, really important to me. That's my you know, what I aim to do. So um, I will always talk that through with you and we'll talk about payment methods. But you, you know, invest in yourself. This isn't, you know, this isn't magic. This is something that you need to, to go to start with and stick with. And, um, yeah. and um, you know, it is about you. So don't feel guilty about that. This is about improving you and the way you feel about yourself and your confidence. So it is investment in you. So these last few then, Juvederm, we've talked about Juvederm, this is a Juvederm box, this is an Ultra Smile, <laughs> one I just threw on the floor, um, and that is, um, I would probably, that one is for lips, Ultra Smile is for lips, um, um, Juvederm is the brand name that the fillers come from, from the company Allegan, who also the company that produced Botox. Um, I only use the best quality stuff. I was trained in Juvederm. Um, it is entirely possible we will be introducing another brand called Kaisense soon. That comes into the next one in, K in K. K Kaisense is proving to be a really, really fantastic um, uh, filler. It's quite new to the market, but it's getting some rave reviews. Some colleagues of mine have been on the trial panels and rate it very, very highly. So Juvederm is the one I'm using at the minute and will continue to use, but we may also use Kaisense. In fact, it's Kaisense that I've got in my cheeks. I've got three different types of Kaisense in various areas on my cheeks. So that was part of K. And I did Kissable for K because I couldn't think of anything else actually. Um, and that is just to promote, we can do fabulous lip fillers and people who are started off, you know, feeling their lips are very thin or um, not hydrated, make them feel kissable again. So that's a nice easy one. Uh, my L's were LED. So that's LED light therapy. I use a Saluma light therapy um, device. LED light therapy is fantastic. Invariably I use it as a top-up treatment. We use it as part of chemical peels. Um, I use it for taking inflammation down after microneedling. You can use it as a standalone treatment for general anti-aging. It's brilliant for if using the blue light for, LED, for um, acne treatments. And you can also use the Saluma for pain relief as well. So I've used it for um, RSI that I get in my hands. So LED treatment is actually really really good and i'm starting to use it more and more i said more often than not as part of another treatment but anybody who is in my database who gives me their date of birth will get a free led facial on or near their birthday it needs to be used within four weeks of your birthday but you will get a free um led treatment all you have to do is get that booked in and that will include a cleanse and prep 30 minute led serums and sunscreen finish so it's about a 40 minute appointment and it's surprisingly relaxing. You can lay there, we put on some nice music, and you can lay there and feel like you're lying on the beach for a bit because don't we all need that, frankly? Um, lips, we've talked about lips, done lips. We don't need to do that again. Um, laser hair removal was the other L. I know it's not specifically skin, but it's where I started. It's what I do. I do half of my day is taken up doing laser hair removal. 
and it's fabulous. I use a Soprano Ice Laser. I can treat any hair on the body as long as it's the right colour. It's pain free. I can't treat white, grey, blonde, some reds and very fine hair because you need pigment to heat up to get the response. So other than that, I can treat all other hair colours, all skin colours from very pale all the way through to um, Fitzpatrick 5 and 6 black skin tones, pain free, very effectively. Women invariably come to me initially for facial hair removal um, or go the whole hog, bikini, legs, I can do Hollywood bikini um, and some people literally just start at the top and we work down. So it's a really fabulous treatment and um, guys tend to come for backs and chests. I can do bikini for men and women. I don't have a word. I'm going to have another competition for this. I've never come up with a word for men's bikini. It isn't really a thing. So I never really quite know what to call it. So got any good ideas? Let me know. That would be ace. Um, and then today was M. So two of my three have gone out today, but I'll cover them all. So men, so I've just mentioned men, okay, men's laser hair removal is really important and I see quite a few guys for that. But men also have anti-aging treatments. They use skincare products and that's becoming more and more popular, which is fabulous um, because why shouldn't men age, age gracefully too? So I, I have quite a few guys now on sunscreens and um, uh, they, guys that have skin treatments. We also can do a hair rejuvenation, that's for women as well, but obviously more commonly it's the guys that are going thin so using the Wow Fusion device, which I haven't shown you yet, I've been talking about it a lot, but I've got one here to show you. This is a Wow Fusion device. Your mesotherapy goes in the little bottle. There's a, I can see, there's little tiny needles there, if you can see that up there on Instagram. So mesotherapy goes in here, and that is stamped into the skin. You, they're slightly longer needles for the hair restoration. Um, but it's really good for stimulating hair growth. I've done some really fab work on my husband, actually. He's very grateful for that. Um, and then microneedling, which we've talked about quite a lot. So the Wow Fusion that I've just shown you is uh, a type of microneedling. And then Skin Pen, this fabulous bit of kit. This is a very, very good microneedling uh, device. There's a needle cartridge that goes on the end. And if you can just, so what that does is it forces the needles into the skin, 93,000 perforations a minute. So very, very different to the Wow Fusion, which I've now lost. There it is. So um, I think it's 14 needles in there, 10 in there. But obviously this is relying on me stamping. You're not going to get thousands and thousands of perforations. With this one you do, you obliterate your your barrier function with this, but you get deeper, you're going to get slightly different action with this one. This one is what I tend to um, preference with um, uh, acne scarring. This one I tend to um, use more for general anti-aging, um, but it depends on the person and what we're trying to achieve. So both useful and valid types of microneedling just work in different ways and obviously you get the mesotherapy with the Wow Fusion. Um, and then the last one is menopause. It's something I've mentioned uh, a few times today um, it's responsible for a lot of things a lot of changes hormonal changes can lead to lack of self-confidence and emotional problems it affects the elasticity of the skin how the skin um, produces oil it can lead to um, adult onset acne it can do all sorts of things to the skin it encourages hair growth sometimes people have never had facial hair but hit menopause and suddenly they're sprouting a beard and they're in like a shop to try and control that. So menopause is a really, really big thing. Right at the beginning we talked about ageing and it's my job to work out what that means for that person. It's the same with menopause. Some people don't even notice it. They, they sort of swan through it. Um, but for some people it's a really big deal and it can really affect them and their skin and their outlook on life and all sorts of things. So for me, it's my job to get to the bottom of how that affects that person and what we need to do about it and how we manage the skin because the skin is different to what it was in, when they were in their 20s and 30s. So it's a really important um, time of life for a lot of women and often a time that brings them to me in the first place. They see the changes quite rapidly in their skin. I often get the, 
my skin didn't look like this six months ago and suddenly it's done this, it's dropped, it's done that, it feels terrible, it's whatever it is, my rosacea's flared up, whatever those things are. And that can happen really quite quickly. So menopause is a really, really important thing for me um, to, to manage properly with my clients. Supplementation comes into that kind of thing as well. So you stuck with me for nearly an hour. Well done, guys. Um, and um, I've covered all of those things I've covered in the first half of the alphabet. So um, if anybody has any comments or questions, I haven't been able to see any comments or questions come up. So if there's any there, I will jump in and and reply to those. But if anybody wants to PM me separately as well of anything that they're interested in, do let me know. I'm going to switch off hopefully Instagram and Facebook at the same time. Instagram, if I've not been looking at you properly, I apologise. I've tried to level up my camera so I'm looking, but I'm finding myself looking at the screen rather than my camera on the laptop. So um, if I haven't been looking at you, it's not personal. I am talking to you guys as well. Any shares and likes you can do for me would help enormously. Um, I'd love some support like that. And any referrals to me, that would be great. I do give freebies out for um, for referrals, so like LED facials. Hope you've enjoyed that. Um, it's been nice to come and chat to you. It's been too long. Um, and stand by for the second half of the alphabet on Instagram and I'll come back and do a live again when we've reached Z. Have a lovely day. I will see you all soon. Take care. Bye. I don't know how to switch off. How do I switch off? So Instagram, you've still got me for a minute. Oh, I've got comments as well. So actually, right, hold on Instagram. There's loads of you. Fabulous. Hi, guys. Somebody wants to be in my live video with me. I don't know who that was. That could have been interesting. Radioactivity. I know. Silly me. Um, hi, Chris. Hi, Vicky. Thank you, Vicky. I know I'm very pleased with my hair. With my hair. I've got a very talented hairdresser. My lovely niece, Lauren. Um, Oh, yes, yeah, Alimo travel packs is a necessity for travel when flying. Good one, Vicky. Yeah, they are really good for that, actually, aren't they? Um, save that, yeah, save you getting your products anyway. My daughter's desperate to make a coffee. You can crack on, darling. It's all right. I've moved on to just Instagram now. You're okay. <laughs> um, menopause dilemma. Yeah, fantastic. So I'm going to end my live. I don't quite know how to do it at the moment. Um, that one, I think. Hopefully, it's not going to all disappear. And anyway, it's been lovely. I hope that I'm not just going to lose all this. I will see you all later. Have a lovely day. Take it easy. How was your day, darling?